Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Professor Emma's Rao, who is in Hyderabad in India. How are you doing, Professor? I'm doing good. Thank you for uh, having me on your show. And I think uh, it's the second time we are going to uh, have a uh, meeting. Yeah, yeah, this is a second, so welcome back. Uh, Professor Rao is the father of soft leadership and the founder of the MSR Leadership Consultants in India, C-Suite Advisor. Uh, and what we're gonna talk about today is the concept of, of soft leadership uh, and why that's important for the future and what the benefits of soft leadership are. So maybe, uh, Professor, let's just start out with, give your definition of what do you mean by soft leadership? Uh, uh, let me briefly explain why I have coined this uh, concept. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I earned my PhD in soft skills in the year 2011, and uh, I conducted several training sessions uh, for corporates and in the, in the educational institutions. So there, uh, they were unhappy with the leadership styles, prevailing leadership styles. Then I thought, why not to coin a new leadership style? Because I served in the Indian uh, Air Force. Uh, leadership is close to my heart. And uh, soft skills is the area I have done research for four years. So then I blended both soft skills and leadership and point soft leadership. So the soft leadership is basically about uh, leading people through soft skills, leading people to persuasive skills. It is to lead uh, from the front with mm -hmm. people orientation, without compromising task orientation. So I have coined this concept and uh, I have written a couple of research papers and they have been published in international journals like Emerald, Leader to Leader. And I have written a couple of books also on uh, soft leadership. Uh, total four books I have written. Uh, right now I have three books. I'll just show you. Uh, mm -hmm. This is the book on soft leadership. Uh, the father of modern HR. Uh, Dow Alwich has written forward for this book. Okay. Uh, okay. This is, uh, Another yeah, book on soft leadership. Mm -hmm. And so, what are the so? And I know you've got a third one. So, what are the um, so? Sometimes I think the problem with things like soft skills and that is people think that they are not as important as what maybe people would term hard skills. So, how do you convince people that? the soft leadership is a beneficial way to go? Because a lot of people would say, a lot of people might instinctively say, well, you know, in leadership, you know, you got to be, you got to be tough and determined and resolute and all of those things. And soft leadership sounds different from that, but is it? See, uh, basically there's a concept that uh, leadership has to be very tough, uh, task oriented. Mm. Uh, but uh, with the changing times and technologies, uh, there's a shift uh, uh, on leadership globally. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, people would like to work with uh, partners, not even with leaders. That's the kind of mindset. Uh, especially right. the millennials appreciate working with partners, not with leaders. Now centennials are entering into the workforce. Even uh, they are much smarter than this, uh, these uh, millennials. Even they prefer to work with partners. So. Uh, the basic idea for leadership is, uh, you know, uh, to lead from the front with uh, toughness and strictness. Those things don't work out in the current context. Not only now, in the future also, those, those things don't work out. So this soft leadership helps in many ways uh, within the organizations uh, to improve the you know, organizational bottom lines and to achieve organizational uh, excellence and effectiveness and also to lead people with a people touch right and uh, uh, keeping all these uh, things in view and the future scenario in view uh, so i strongly believe that uh, soft leadership is going to rule the world and also let me share politically also yes this soft leadership is not only for organizations but even for countries so the olden days of you know toughness military those kind of that kind of mindset uh, uh, doesn't prevail in the current context. So what is required is uh, a new mindset, toolset, and skill set. Uh, those can be provided by way of uh, soft leadership. 
Right. And so um, explain to me a couple of characteristics of a soft leadership and, and how those benefit an organization. See, there are uh, actually 11 C's I have coined. Uh, mm -hmm. Those 11 C's collectively constitute uh, soft leadership. I would like to name them. Uh, first yes. one is character, second charisma, mm -hmm. third conscience, fourth conviction, fifth courage, sixth communication, seventh compassion, eighth commitment, ninth consistency, tenth consideration, and eleventh contribution. These are all the 11 C's uh, I have created. This uh, 11 characteristics collectively constitute soft leadership, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, this soft leadership is uh, different from hard leadership. So let me share a couple of examples. So if you look at uh, uh, Steve Jobs, he was a hard leader. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you look at uh, Tim Cook, he's a soft leader. Okay. If you look at uh, Jack Wells, he was a hard leader. If you look at Jeff Wimelt of uh, uh, General, uh, General Electric, uh, uh, is a soft leader. So uh, the, uh, that's how we can differentiate between hard leaders and soft leaders. See, uh, 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 there are times where hard leaders also survived and succeeded, and mm -hmm. hard leadership is required, especially when uh, when the time is very short and to manage the crisis, uh, we need hard leaders. Uh, right. uh, rest of the time, we need uh, more of uh, soft leaders and uh, we have to adopt the soft leadership. Um, so do you, do, you think, do you think in this current climate, I mean, given the global pandemic, the, in some ways you need a combination of soft and hard leadership because there's a lot of tough things uh, that need exactly. to be done. We need to have a soft leadership. So for instance, I would like to cite the example of uh, Donald Trump. Uh, Donald yeah. Trump uh, he is uh, somewhat a hard leader, right? So when he led, uh, uh, when he leads America, so he had uh, challenges with the World Health Organization and uh, he had uh, uh, challenges with uh, China. So, so what he lacked is uh, soft leadership. So if he had handled uh, in a different way through soft leadership, probably uh, things would, would have been better for uh, uh, Trump. Uh, so here also it's very obvious that uh, the, uh, the application of uh, soft leadership uh, helps a lot. Mm. That's um, yeah, but but I guess I mean one of the challenges is uh, is Professor Rao that in times of crisis, as you say, you know people are looking for they're looking for inspiration. They're looking for somebody to turn to. They're looking for somebody they believe can get them through this um, situation. And um, and so. Um, so maybe sometimes people do look for, you know, strong, what they perceive as strong leadership. Um, so again, like, how do you, how do you, um, how do you combine both? How do you still come across as, as strong and, and capable and yet um, use the soft leadership skills that you're talking about? Yeah, thank you for asking this wonderful question. There's a thin line between uh, soft leadership and hard leadership. When we talk mm -hmm. about diplomacy, when we talk about foreign countries, when we talk about people, we need to have a soft leadership. But especially in the uh, uh, crisis like COVID-19, we need mm -hmm. to have a tough leadership. That is hard leadership. See, for instance, I will tell you, uh, most of the countries, they, uh, they enforce lockdown. So enforcing lockdown is a kind of hard leadership. Mm -hmm. Again, that is for the benefit of the people. Right? So yep. there, people adopted hard leadership. That means by the, although people didn't like uh, lockdown, but uh, lockdown was uh, clamped and forced globally to save mm -hmm. the lives of the people to avoid further uh, spread of this uh, pandemic. So here it's very obvious that uh, there are some uh, occasions like crisis, like coronavirus crisis, uh, or anything, suddenly some, uh, uh, some unforeseen Mm -hmm. things have happened. So we need to uh, adopt hard leadership, right? Uh, rest of the time, we need to adopt soft leadership. I right. hope I have made it very clear. Yeah, yeah. No, no, absolutely. 
And so how can, how can leaders um, transition to incorporate some soft leadership skills, particularly if maybe, you know, you come up through traditional leadership and maybe the people who led you, um, you know, operated in, in the, the hard style or the traditional style or whatever you like to call it. How do you, how do current leaders start to incorporate some of these soft leadership skills into how they operate? See, the thing is, there must be a shift in the mindset of the leaders. Okay, the so-called uh, 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 this uh, autocratic uh, uh, command and control uh, attitude uh, uh, doesn't work out in the current context. So we need to have trust and track leadership. So we can have trust and track leadership only through soft leadership. So the leaders have realized, and uh, still leaders have to realize. Uh, and they have to reinvent with the changing times and uh, they have to uh, uh, change their uh, leadership style towards the soft leadership and if you observe globally there is more significance for uh, soft leadership or uh, soft skills globally uh, corporates uh, they started realizing the importance of soft skills uh, previously they were caring for uh, hard skills uh, domain skills they were emphasizing more on domain skills uh, 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 now they started realizing the importance of soft skills. Of course, the, uh, we need to have a jubilous blend of both uh, hard skills and soft skills. And uh, soft skills are going to play as to come. So keeping all these factors in view, uh, keeping the current global scenario in view, and especially in the post-coronavirus world, and also uh, in the uh, 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 in, the, in the future world, which will be high tech world and uh, very agile, very volatile. Right. So we need to have uh, soft leadership. So there must be shift in the mindset of the leaders globally uh, to reinvent themselves. Mm. And I think it's fair to say that people are looking much more today for more humanization, more connection, because we went through a period of time where technology seemed to be taking over everything. Everything seemed to be kind of at an arm's length away. And and now, you know, through the pandemic and other, I think people, I was started before the pandemic, but people are looking for more uh, humanization, as I said, more human level contact and leveraging technology to enable that as opposed to kind of hide behind it. So I think there is a real challenge here for how leaders reach out and, and communicate with, with their employees. Uh, you say in the uh, post-coronavirus world or uh, uh, during the COVID time, which one are mm -hmm. you referring? No, I'm referring, I'm saying that in a post-COVID world, I think people will look for more humanization, more human contact, more kind of relationship building. Uh, technology is both a boom and a bane. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a... Uh, uh, it's a ban because it led to so many complex uh, complexities and uh, people started uh, staying. Uh, they, they they started avoiding people and uh, they they started uh, connecting with uh, technology. Okay, that is a challenge. But at the same time, technology has also connected the people. You and I are connected globally because yeah. of technology. Mm -hmm. See, during the COVID nineteen. Uh, all the people blame technology. The technology only helped people connect across the world virtual. Yeah. Right? So, uh, so in this way, what happens? Uh, since the people were connected through technology, so people worked from home. So productivity and performance was not hampered. If there were no technology, what would have happened? People would have remained at home only. The productivity mm -hmm. and uh, performance would have been affected globally. And also people communicated, uh, uh, contacted virtually instead of uh, physically. Right? right? So technology is a double-edged sword. How you take it? So during the COVID-19, uh, in fact, the technology helped us connect with various people. Right? So although COVID is a threat for us, uh, the, uh, the opportunity is that we are able to uh, trim ourselves and we will we became more mindful and uh, we started uh, leading life with the purpose and meaning. We, we just mm -hmm. we just came to know how what is really important to us. Earlier people were groping in the darkness. They were uh, doing so many things. Now, 
in the post covid world people will focus only on the areas in which they are passionate and they try to lead their life with purpose and meaning Mm. Yeah, no, I think that's a, I think that's a, gr- it's a great insight, uh, Professor. I, I do believe you're, you're absolutely 100% correct. I think uh, that uh, during this process, people have had to reflect, self-reflect um, a lot, and also uh, have had to work a little harder at connecting. I mean, the technology makes it easier to connect, but you have to actually embrace the technology to connect properly, like to bring the human element to it, to bring the the connectedness to it. And I think that's going to serve us going forward. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, so, uh, see, before, uh, during, uh, before the COVID-19, things were different. Uh, after COVID-19, things have become totally different. We started focusing more on... Uh, virtual meetings, uh, mm-hmm. earlier people were physically going and meeting. Now those things have come down and people started connecting uh, uh, virtually. So uh, these are all the changes that have come drastically. So I think uh, instead of uh, treating, uh, although COVID-19 is a, 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 was a threat and they, uh, there were many people who died, but uh, the silver lining is that, you know, uh, we'll be able to prepare for the next pandemic and uh, people will start focusing uh, on what really they mean for. And presently, mm-hmm. I would like to say that uh, this COVID-19 emphasized uh, 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 humility, humanity and hope. That's what I strongly believe. Yeah, no, no, I I'd agreed. And I think it's also... People, people have become very humble. They, 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 they became grounded because COVID-19 can attack anyone, whether the rich yeah. person or poor person, both can be attacked. So people started realizing and they, they became grounded. So they became humble because the, uh, COVID-19 is a tumble that made people humble, right? So mm-hmm. it uh, overall emphasized on humility, humanity and hope. Yeah, a tumble that made people humble. I like it. Uh, that's a great, uh, that's a great catchphrase. Um, but I like it because um, you're, you're absolutely correct, because this was the first real, I think, global collective experience that people have ever had. I mean, there's been world wars and stuff, but there were areas of the world that were kind of untouched by it. This has been the most kind of collective experience. So I think we're going through a certain evolu- you know, collective global evolution during this time. And I, and I think that's why messages like yours, Professor, I think are, are, are very powerful to say that you know, there are new ways of doing things, there are new ways of, of approaching leadership. And, um, and yeah, so do you want any final words on, on soft leadership that you want to share with the audience? Soft leadership uh, is the only leadership which is essential not only in the current context but also in the future context. This uh, leadership perspective can be explored uh, to achieve global peace and prosperity and also to uh, achieve organizational excellence and effectiveness. So I strongly implore uh, to uh, explore soft leadership for overall global good. Not the, mm-hmm. It's not that, you know, I am the father of soft leadership. Uh, it's not that uh, I have coined soft leadership, but because this particular leadership is very much essential because it, it uh, brings humanity into one platform. It connects people and it believes in uh, uh, persuasion rather than force. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a fantastic. Listen, Professor, thank you so much. All of Professor Raz's information will be below this video, uh, so you can uh, you can connect with him on LinkedIn, and you can find out more about uh, the work he does with the MSR Leadership Consultants. Um, professor, before we go, do you want to add anything to tell people a little bit more about yourself? Uh, I uh, uh, people can uh, find my blogs and uh, my YouTube. Uh, what they should know is that they should they should search on uh, Google Professor M S Rao. M means motivation, S means success, R A O. If they uh, type on search engines, they can find my uh, YouTube channel. Recently, I have started one more YouTube channel where I post to educational uh, mm. uh, videos. And uh, I have a blog, Vision 2030, 1 million global leaders. And they can find all my social media platforms, especially LinkedIn, 
fit uh, they can find. Uh, I am passionate about sharing my knowledge freely with the world. So I keep sharing a lot of free content so people can uh, view videos and also they can uh, find the free articles on uh, social media platforms. Yeah, fantastic. Listen, thank you so much, Professor. My name is John Golden, Says Pop Online, Says Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.